Do you find yourself willing to tackle almost any subject except the one with experiments that might explode in your kitchen? <laughs> or maybe you're wondering how you can possibly teach something that seems to contradict your faith. Well, you're in the right place because today we're tackling homeschool science, a subject that doesn't have to be complicated, expensive, or contrary to your beliefs. If we haven't met, I'm Kim with Not Consumed Ministries. We help families grow in faith so they can live not consumed by life. Today, I wanna to share with you a basic plan for homeschool science. K through 12, as well as some tips and tricks I've learned along the way. Let me start with a confession. I love science. In high school, I couldn't put down my biology textbook. I was even president of the Biology Honor Society. <laughs> and for fun, we spent our time blazing a trail on the back of the school property and growing various habitats. I know, total nerd alert. <laughs> but I also know that not everyone feels this way about science. Maybe you're one of those parents who would rather have a root canal than teach the periodic table. Or perhaps you enjoy science but haven't found a way to engage your kids in learning it. Sometimes we get so caught up in memorizing seemingly random names, facts, and compounds that we miss the beauty of science. Yes, I said science is beautiful. In fact, it ought to be every Christian's favorite subject. Because in the learning of science, we can truly enjoy and find awe in all that God has created for us. So before we get to the nuts and bolts of science, we have to talk about our reason why. I record my science vision in my organized homeschool planner. Each year, I challenge myself to come up with biblical reasons for teaching certain subjects and share these with my kids to help motivate us all. For science, our why is to help us to take better care of the earth and to help us see God through creation creation and marvel at that creation. We also want science to help us discover God's hidden treasures and to help us defend the Bible's truth. I grew up thinking that the Bible and science contradicted one another, but they don't. That's one of the most important things I wanted my kids to get out of our science education in my home. So here are some tips for teaching science. First, always keep science in its place. Science is only a core subject if you're in high school. If you're not, only reading and math are your most important subjects. Now that doesn't mean you can't or shouldn't teach science. It just means that we need to make sure that math and reading take priority over everything else we do in our homeschool. If either of those subjects aren't going well or need more practice, focus your time there. Don't feel burdened by other subjects such as science or history. Your kids will be just fine if you come back to science later. In fact, they'll be better for it. Second, science is always best learned by doing, seeing, and touching. That doesn't mean you can't use a book but it's something to keep in mind. Always be looking for creative ways to give your kids hands-on experiences, whether it's field trips, experiments, or nature walks. Third, all science should focus on the scientific method. When I say the scientific method, what I mean is teaching our kids to ask questions in a scientific way, like, I wonder what will happen if. If our children learn exploring, problem solving, and looking at things from different angles, we've been successful in science. It's really okay if they can't name every bone in the body or classify every animal in the kingdom. To be honest, very few people can. Fourth, whatever science you're using must match your worldview. Everything has a worldview. Everything is pushing an agenda. In this culture, more than ever, we have to be super careful. The Bible warns us against false teaching and wolves in sheep's clothing. Make sure you filter through and look at what you're teaching. Don't just assume. Now, this doesn't mean that we don't use books or resources that have evolutionary thought or even millions of years theories. We do use those resources, but I have a handy Sharpie marker that we use to mark right through incorrect facts and put the correct facts there. So my kids are beginning, even at an early age, to be able to defend what they believe. Avoidance of these topics can lead to your kids getting older and thinking that you just didn't know. This is one of the reasons why kids walk away from their faith, so be careful. Teach evolution, just teach kids why it's wrong. Okay, let's break science down by ages. I like to start our elementary science in the backyard, and that's why we created Backyard and Beyond. This kindergarten curriculum takes kids on nature adventures in their backyard and community. Kids develop essential literacy and math skills while exploring the great outdoors. It's a win-win. I don't recommend buying a science curriculum unless it's integrated with core subjects like math and reading, such as Backyard and Beyond. The biggest reason goes back to my first tip. Math and reading must be the core in the early years. We have to focus on getting really strong math facts and really strong reading skills to build that foundation. Once that foundation is built, we can branch into any area of science we want. 
When my kids were little, we read great, amazing living books about science. We kept a notebook of all the things we'd read and we just explored interests as they came up. We took a lot of walks, explored nature, and went on numerous field trips. We actually had one notebook that covered science and social studies. And I've got a video on social studies that I'll link in the description. Here's an example of one of the things we did for science. Many, many years ago, we took a family trip to the Grand Canyon. So we kept a Grand Canyon notebook. We explored, colored, and drew pictures. All of this before we went to the Grand Canyon so my daughter would have an idea of what to expect. It was so much fun and so much more meaningful to her. This science journal approach can be done thematically like we did with the Grand Canyon, or you can just put everything into one journal as you read books and explore like I suggested earlier. In late elementary, if everything else is in place and you haven't had any hurdles with reading and you feel like it's strong, <laughs> Can I emphasize that more? Go ahead and try something more traditional if you want to, but don't feel pressured. My son Luke didn't do a traditional science curriculum until fifth grade. This wasn't because he wasn't ready with math or reading, but because he was doing chemo treatments and I didn't want to frustrate the situation. I knew science could wait. So we focused on math and reading during that time and save the rest for later. My two favorites for later elementary were Apologia and Master Books. Luke tried elementary zoology by Master Books. One of the things I really loved about this curriculum was that it came with activity books and living books that were super fun and engaging for kids his age. It also came with worksheets and activities. These living books were mostly Answers in Genesis books, which is a trusted company for biblically sound science materials, a priority for me. Another idea for later elementary, especially if you have multiple children, is unit studies. Unit studies were my dream homeschool method. Let your kids pick a topic that many of your children, or at least kindergarten through eighth grade, can explore together. You can find resources on the internet, some are already put together for you and some are just printables. You can even start a Pinterest board and collect ideas and follow the interests and passion of your kids. It's a lot more work, but it's a lot of fun. Most people would say that middle school is the time to hunker down and push hard in science. I disagreed. I found that middle school was a great time to dig into topics that my children had extreme interest in. I knew that in high school, they were gonna be a little more limited. So we enjoyed things like marine biology, astronomy, anatomy, and ecology. My kids love studying these topics and it gave them a passion for science. So I highly recommend that you consider letting your kids pick what they're going to pursue in middle school. When Nathan was in seventh grade, he did general science from Master Books. Similar to the elementary age that Luke did, this stage came with beautiful books that weren't as intimidating as a textbook. They were smaller and more engaging. He also did a chemistry class just like this. We have loved Experience Astronomy by Luke and Trisha Gilkerson. It's a fascinating subject. Kids love it and the study of it builds scientific skills and knowledge without seeming so scientific. But I like to save it for high school, so let's talk about that now. Of course, you have to follow your state requirements and I can't tell you what those are, but I will remind you to read them closely. Parents almost always assume that you must take biology, chemistry, and physics. No question, no choice. When I read the South Carolina requirements, I discovered those subjects aren't required at all. I just needed to have two different disciplines and any three sciences. Now, some colleges may require specific science courses. I would highly recommend that if your child has an idea where they might wanna go or which direction they're going in, that you wanna pull up those requirements. We did this and what we found was that colleges weren't nearly as stringent as you might expect. With that in mind, we had a more flexible view of what high school science should look like. My daughter Rachel did Biology 101, which was a DVD series covering all the major concepts of biology. She kept a notebook where she watched the videos, noted things, drew diagrams, and documented what she was learning. This was great for her art-loving soul. <laughs> I had her do some projects and experiments alongside that. The reason I approached it that way was because I wanted to make sure that reading wasn't a stumbling block in science. Science should be about science and not about reading, right? Now my oldest child did Apology of Biology and she loved it. Later, my oldest went outside of the box and took experience astronomy at the high school level. This was a 36 week course guiding kids through the study of astronomy with quizzes and lectures, all of the things you would expect from a typical high school course, but in a really fun way. The Gilkersons also had a high school level biology class by the time Nathan was in school. He loved it. 
These types of courses are great because they provide excellent teaching, independent curriculum, and a strong biblical worldview all in one. Eventually, all of my kids ended up moving to the Gilkerson's Journey Academy for their super engaging online science courses. Now they have physics and so much more. As always, I'm going to link all of these resources in the description below. And that's all for science. I hope you were encouraged and found a few tips to help you as you seek to teach your children how amazing God is through the study of science. Remember, science doesn't have to be complicated or scary. Keep your priorities straight. Focus on hands-on learning when possible. Be mindful of worldview. And don't be afraid to adjust your approach based on your child's needs and interests. If you found this helpful, please share it with a friend. It means a lot to me. And consider subscribing to our channel so you don't miss our next video on homeschool electives, my favorite. Until next time, remember that you don't have to be a science expert to give your child a great science education. You've got this, and I'm cheering you on.